Hi guys, this is Lone Star Gymnastics Training Essentials for New Employees. Um, part one, we'll talk about employee basics. Um, if you are new to Lone Star Gymnastics or new to the sport or new to business in general, this is probably going to be good for you. Um, so stay tuned and uh, enjoy the ride. Employee basics. We're going to talk about being prepared to work, uh, the business, how it runs, basics and that, uh, mainly pay clock on this one. Um, and employee expectations. Uh, what we're finding is that often our employees, this is the first time they've ever held a job, and they just don't know some things. So we're going to talk about that. Being prepared to work. Um, at Lone Star Gymnastics, what does this mean? Um, the first thing it means is that you show up with enough time to prepare for your class. Um, that could be 10 minutes for some people, 15 minutes for others, 5 minutes for some. But the best thing to do is not show up and walk right into your class. Um, we need you to know what's going on in the gym that day. Uh, if your schedule had to make a change because we have a last minute call in. Um, or if a piece of equipment is down or you have a bunch of new trials today. We just want you to show up with enough time to prepare for your class and to uh, you know, help out where needed basically. Um, the second thing that mean, means is that you show up dressed, hair and makeup done mentally and physically prepared to do your job uh, mentally and emotionally prepared to do your job you know uh, oftentimes there's stuff going on behind the scenes in your life we get that school's rough relationships are tough kids are tough and um, when you walk through those doors it's difficult to put those things away but that's part of the job you got to put them off to the side you got to do your class with good energy positive energy and then afterwards, you can go back to your life and deal with that. Uh, with that being said, we care about you. We want you to be mentally, emotionally, and physically healthy. And uh, we're here to help out wherever we can. But when we clock in and we take that class, we got to be focused on that class and doing what's right for them, doing what they're paying us to do. Um, failing to come to work prepared to do your job makes other employees take on more responsibilities and makes the company look unprofessional and unresponsible. You know, we're not a mom and pop shop. We work, we're professional, we show up on time, we do this. We're not, you know, we have four classes in a row and they all got to run on time every single day. So um, part of this is just being prepared to work. Uh, business basics, things to know. We pay you every two weeks. Our pay periods start on Wednesday and end on Tuesday, on a Tuesday. Um, Lone Star Gymnastics uses a digital pay clock system to track its hours. Um, a supervisor or another employee will walk you through the basics of this system. One huge note, if you forget to clock in, please clock out. Um, our system will be flagged. Uh, when we go in there, it will show that you have a missing punch and we can make the correction. If you don't clock out, then we will not see the problem unless you notify us. Oftentimes you notify us and we're just going to say just clock out. We know when you're supposed to be here. We'll go look at the security camera, whatever we need to do, and we'll clock you in on time. But if you don't do anything or you clock in late, we're not going to see it. So be very mindful of that. Uh, absences. Absences are pre-planned things. This is not last-minute call-ins. Um, one of the biggest issues we have is consistency with uh, our instructors. We hear about it all the time. If, you're, if you miss a couple weeks, um, it affects the class in so many different levels. One, the, the substitute doesn't know the kid. Um, they don't know where they're at in the progression, so they're rolling back. They're going to more basic, so the kids aren't progressing. And um, the kids just aren't as comfortable as you. They don't have that relationship with you. Um, so we need to make sure that we are responsible and passionate enough to be consistent in your attendance. Um, with that being said, once a class has been assigned to you, it's your class. That means we expect you to be responsible and to claim it as your own and then to help find a suitable instructor to be able to work it. Um, all absences need to have a time off request form filled out um, and that needs to have a substitute a, a signature on there and it needs to be given to Donna, who's our general manager for approval. Uh, your time off requests can be denied. Um, so if there's just nobody to substitute you and uh, or it's last minute, um, then we can deny that. Um, it happens 
uh, not very frequently that we deny it. If your consistency is not great, it'll be denied. Um, so call-ins. Call-ins are your last minute, you know, I'm sick, I gotta... Business basics. Call-ins. So these are your last minute call-ins, such as you woke up at 6 a.m. puking. So we have different options here laid out for you. We want to kind of like quiz you and find out which one we should do. So the first one, A, wait it out, notify your manager 20 minutes before shift starts. That happens a lot. So you wake up at 6 a.m., your shift's at 4 o'clock, you wait till 3.30, 3.45 to call in and let us know that you're puking and you have a fever. Um, that's just not, that's not intelligent, that's not responsible. Um, we read through that, you know, especially if it's a Friday or it's a Monday and uh, you're sick. Um, we read through that or Saturday mornings that you're sick, um, especially if it happens multiple weeks in a row. Uh, B, immediately call your manager to let them know you're not able to come in. It's 6 a.m. Do you, do you get on the phone and call your manager at 6 a.m. knowing that they're probably in bed sleeping? Probably not. Uh, text a couple of other employees that you're sick and can't come in today. You would not believe how often we learn that you, somebody's sick from another em employee and they're not coming in that day. We don't get notified, but somehow their BFF knew, um, and they're like, oh, didn't you know he was sick today? No, we didn't know. Nobody, they, they weren't responsible enough to call and let us know. D, help, find, help, try, help to find the substitute and notify your manager once the office is open. That was a good one, um, but we're going to kind of like say A, B, C, D, kind of like a mix of it all. Um, first thing we want you to do is just text us, say, hey, uh, I woke up sick, under three degree fever, puking. I obviously can't come in today. Um, that way the manager knows and they can already start formulating what's gonna happen that day. Um, next thing, if text or put on the Facebook group, hey, I'm sick today, is anybody able to cover my shift? Right, and start helping become part of the problem, be part of the team at Lone Star Gymnastics to help fix issues. Um, that'll help dramatically. Now, there are days, especially pre-COVID, where you're like, you wake up, you're not feeling 100%, your shift's not until like 3 or 4, and you can kind of like wait it out to kind of know. But still, in those instances, you text and say, hey, this is what's going on. I think I'll be okay. It's probably just sinuses. Um, let me get showered. Let me get up and do this. But I just want to let you know that there's a real possibility that I won't be able to come in today. today. Uh, this is the same thing for whenever you have a hard day. You have a hard day. It's school, you have a problem on an assignment, you have a big grade. Let us know what's going on so that maybe we can have somebody help with your shift. And maybe maybe you can get out a little bit early because we have a second coach available that day. Um, so please help us be responsible in this way. This is one of the biggest issues at businesses and it really affects that consistency problem like we were talking about on the last slide. So our common goal at Lone Star Gymnastics is that we believe that gymnastics can positively impact every family who participates in this program. Now, I didn't say every child, I said every family. This should have a positive impact on the families that participate. So how can you teach a kid to have a positive impact on that family? Well, we can teach them good life lessons, good morals, good ethics. Um, we can teach the young man, hey, you really need to open the door for mom and dad. I really wanna hear back next week that you've been helping out. You can have them and then you can go make sure they're opening the door on the way out the door for their family. Um, so that is our goal and, it's, and everybody here is tasked with making that goal possible. So it's everyone's job. In business, there are certain things where it's everyone's job. Here's a few examples for us. Pick up trash when walking into and through the facility. If it's on the floor, pick it up, throw it away. Um, Right in front of our building, it's in a corner and there's like a whirlwind that goes through. So any trash in the parking lot just kind of comes through and sits there. As you come in, there's a piece of trash, there's a trash can right there. Pick it up, throw it away. It makes us look cleaner. It doesn't makes us look less trashy. We're not a trashy facility, so pick it up, throw it away. Um, if you're, especially if you're morning, because that's part of the morning cruise shift, um, walk in, pick it up. And uh, a manager will go um, say, hey guys, will someone help? Or will you guys do this? Why take care of this? Um, so expect that assignment. Clean up messes. If a parent spills something, then help clean it up. If you're not in the middle of teaching and you're going through the lobby and you have two minutes to go grab paper towels and help wipe it up, do it. Um, 
it means a lot to our staff. It means a lot to everybody. Uh, it means a lot to our clients that you took the two minutes to help them clean up. Um, help other employees when they're struggling. We're a team. We shouldn't have this phrase. It's not my job come out of our mouth when it affects a client's experience. If there's one coach on a class and they have a really difficult kid that day, we need to make sure we're in there. We come over, we, we notify a manager, hey, they're really struggling with this class. I got my own, but they're really struggling. Uh, safety, if you see something wrong, say something. If there's a bar in the way, there's some fall problem, there's a fall zone, whatever it is, say something. Hey, hey, this isn't a wait, let me move it for you. Or, hey guys, stop, let me move this. Um, it just means a lot. It protects the kids. We all don't want kids to get hurt. We all want everybody safe. Um, protect our equipment. If a mat's in a bad shape or has a sharp object on it, then let's move the matting. We're spoiled and have a lot of fun matting to use. The reason we have a lot of matting is we've accumulated it over decades, right? And we took care of it when we got it. So we want to keep that tradition going. The next thing, be respectful to everyone in our building. Uh, doesn't matter who they are, whether it's a coworker, a pain parent or child, we're going to be respectful to them no matter what. Uh, we're going to be, be positive when we're working. We're going to smile. We're going to engage people while moving through the facility. Don't just walk through the facility like grumpy face, like between classes. You know, like look at people in the eyes you walk through. Smile. Give them a little, hey, how's it going? Introduce yourself. Know what the clients a little bit. Um, be professional. Let's make sure that the positive experience is being around pleasant people. Just like when you go to Chick-fil-A, you have great service. They have a smile on their face. They're happy to be there. So let's make sure we're part of that. Business-based communication. So when we're communicating inside the business, it makes us successful. If you have questions and know where to ask them, it's a huge problem for us. Unfortunately, there are times where you can't walk away and ask those questions. So um, to help you out, I want to make sure you know who to talk to about those questions. So for any gymnastics issue, a team coach or manager should be able to answer those. Okay. So uh, experienced staff, you know, senior staff, that's great. Um, but really just look at the team coaches and the managers for any gymnastics problem. They're going to answer it better than anybody else. They've been there, done that. They got the t-shirt. Um, that's their job, their salary. This is what they do for a living, right? Um, facility problems, that's me. Talk to me. If something's not tightening, something's broken, something's acting funny, you just don't know how to move something, you come find me. Uh, scheduling issues, all scheduling issues go through Donna. There are certain tasks where one person doing it makes a whole lot more sense than multiple people. Scheduling is one of those. You can talk to Donna about all of that. Payroll, Brian, myself, and Donna. I just said myself twice. That's okay. Um, uh, she handles the pay clock system. I run all the payroll payroll system. Um, so any questions on that, talk to Don or myself. We'll both be able to give you an answer. Uh, tuition, um, our office staff handles all of that. Um, you're pretty insulated from that as an employee, though that's starting to change a little bit. So anytime you have questions, um, walk, that, walk that parent over and say, hey, they have a question about their account. Can you help them? Um, and their answer is always going to be yes. Or, hey, hold on one second. Let me finish with the client and I'll help her. Communication. Uh, while communicating with staff, students, and clients, we ask that you do the following. Stay positive, energetic, passionate, and always, always, always respectful. If a conversation seems to be going down an uncomfortable path, then grab a manager. Managers are your first line of defense for you, especially you young employees. It's very easy for a parent to try to walk over you. Um, office staff, especially if you're new, the clients will try to walk over you and it messes up the whole system and they try to get stuff for free or they try to wiggle something out of you. Um, if you have an issue, just talk to a manager. Hey, hey, let me go grab my manager. They'll be, they'll be better at addressing your concerns. Um, next thing is just listen before answering any questions. Um, often the client may just want to feel like their concerns are being heard. Um, when we have meetings with clients, oftentimes we just sit there and listen for five minutes while they vent to us or they address their problems or they bring problems to our attention. Um, and if we just sit there and listen, we get a lot of information that we wouldn't have had prior to asking them questions or answering their questions. Um, always answer what you know and don't speculate. If you don't know so, then grab a manager. The managers are there to help you with those tough situations. Follow through with what you say. So be mindful what you say. If you say you're going to do something, you do it. If you tell, if you promise a client something, you deliver on that promise. If you can't, then you need to own up to that mistake. 
So don't get defensive when being corrected. Our goal is to bring you up, not to tear you down. Admit stakes when you're confronted by your manager and work to correct the issue. The biggest thing that we can take away from this is as a new instructor or even an older instructor, you need to be a student of the sport and a student of the business. So you're learning how to teach even 10 years from now. So if you do this for 20 years, you're still learning things. Um, I still learn things. I've been there, done that, I got the t-shirt, been to the national championship, all this stuff, but I still learn about this sport. Every single year I'm learning something new, especially like in recreational science that you're learning constantly. So as we bring stuff to your attention and say, hey, we really don't like to do it this way for this reason, please do it that way. Um, so if we see you doing it again, we're gonna correct you and you're just gonna take that in a stride. You're gonna say, okay, they want it then this way, I'm gonna do it that way. Maybe I don't quite understand why, but I'm gonna lean on their experience and I'll do it this way. And oftentimes it's a safety concern or it's like a class management concern. It's not that you're actually doing something wrong, it just can be done better and it can be done um, with better impact on your clients or our clients. So employee expectations. As part of your employment packet, you receive this really long list of employee expectations. Please make sure to read all of them so there's no confusion about what we are wanting to see from you. Um, a lot of the expectations, the more important ones, have been covered in this lecture. So with that being said, thank you for watching part one of this series. I believe there's four parts, maybe five. And um, I look forward to seeing you out on the coaching floor. Bye, guys.